Hi everyone, it's Doris, Kiwi Scrapper from New Zealand and yes I'm back again um, and I'm here to share a project with you that I've done for a challenge and the challenge has been put up as being hosted by My Serenity Crafts and that's Sarah and Sarah lives in America and the deadline for that was originally the 15th of May and Sarah kindly extended it to the 31st of May because she had two or three entries um, coming internationally and it would have been hard for us all to get them there in time for the original date. So that was nice. We didn't ask her. Well, I didn't ask her, but she did it. Wasn't that lovely? Um, so, you know, it, it's, it's going to be a neat... Um, it, it's a really nice challenge. You just make a one pennant piece, not the whole banner, just one piece of it, which is, you know, what we call it. In England, we call it a pennant, and Sarah's calling it a pennant as well, so that's good. Um, and then Sarah herself will make up a banner for her room, oh, probably her craft room or something. And of course, you need to be a subscriber. So um, go out, go over to my Serenity Crafts channel, and check out her original um, challenge video, and that will tell you everything that you need to know. There's a minimum size and a maximum size for the pennant. I chose to do it the maximum size. And I got a bit confused because I, th for some reason I thought she was showing an entry that was done in centimetres. <laughs> so I, I, made the, I made up a template myself when I worked out the proportions in my head and I did it in those centimetre sizes and it was very small. So I realised then that she was of course talking in inches because she's American. We we work in centimetres over here. So then I just made another, I worked it out in my head, the proportions again, and here it is. And for people, who, you know, I'm, I'm sure everybody can work out how to do a pennant without a pattern, but for those who can't, I did chose to do it seven inches across, and then you take the halfway mark, which is three and a half inches, and remember this is inches, three and a half inches, and then you decide how long you want it to be. So in this case, I thought 10 inches would be a good, you know, you can play around with it. I thought 10 inches would be good in proportion. So I took the halfway mark, put a dot there at three and a half inches, and then I measured 10 inches down from that dot in the middle, put a dot at the end of 10 inches, and then it's just a matter of putting a ruler between this one and the dot and doing a line, and this one and the dot and doing a line. And then you've got your pennant. Or, you know. So I've I've made mine in chipboard. Sarah does want them made in hard, uh, with a hard back, not a not a totally fabric one. So I did mine in chipboard, and then I lined it with a paper called Bonjour, and that's from the Kaiser Craft Collection. So I do that. I punched in a couple of holes on either side, because so that Sarah can put ribbons through and join them up. That one's there, and this one's under here. I kind of like hid them because I didn't want the holes blatantly obvious but they're still quite usable. Um, I use this image here. Um, this one is a paper image. I used the same fabric image on a fabric album for Irene for her birthday challenge in February and um, that was one of the images I used and I got them printed out in paper as well so I thought that was a lovely image, mother and daughter image to use. Um, I put the word adore which is from um, a collection of die cuts from the same Bonjour collection for Kaiser Craft. This was my paper, the 12 by 12, but Irene had sent me um, a package of, of the Bonjour collection, um, die cut collection, so that was out of it, the Adore. The Viva was out of the um, actual, off the actual paper. I just tore that out into a shape. This die cut here of the little bird and the tree and the blossoms, um, that's out of that die cut collection and so is that butterfly. So um, I used this lace here which is this one and it was actually, this was on the other side, it was like two bits of lace with a little space in between so that made one whole width and I just cut down the middle lengthwise to make it into two bits of lace instead of one. And I just put that all the way around and then I put this um, lovely trim here which, which I've had for quite a while now I bought bought locally um, last year sometime so that's gone all around there because the colour matched perfectly with the background and the, and the pink of the lace um, these are wide orchid craft 
flowers. This is the, the large gardenia and the, the a large um, trellis rose. The trellis rose there, two smaller roses, and they you know all are all wild orchid craft, and they've all been glitzed, sparkled up with um, the Tim Holtz stickles, di diamond stickles, which I use an awful lot. Um, these are just plain little ones, and I popped um, deeper pink, almost verging on mulberry purple, into the little pearls, whole pearls in there, and put this is vintage crochet lace, that's real vintage, and across there, and I used this bead trim that I had in my stash that I bought locally. Okay, so that's that. And um, so pop on over to, I hope I hope you like it, Sarah. Um, pop on over to Ser my Serenity Crafts and um, check out Sarah's challenge video and um, or, you know, just contact her if there's any problems or get her address, obviously, because she does want these items sent to her. So you've got until the 31st of May, which is plenty of time to actually create and get them in the post. This one I'm putting in the post to you um, either tomorrow or Friday. So it should be there maximum of 10 days. So it should be there well, well within the deadline date. Okay, thanks for watching. Bye.